Hey guys, Rookie Lock here, back once again. I hope everyone's having a great day. And uh, today I'd just like to uh, talk about a few things that I've been up to in the last week, and a um, few things that I uh, forgot to mention in my last video. Um, I'm not quite sure where to start here. Uh, actually, um, forgot to mention this. This is uh, pretty cool. And thank my brother for this. Um, it was my birthday in October at the end of the month and uh, randomly got this package in the mail. I uh, wasn't expecting it. It was from Amazon. And it's actually pretty cool. You can uh, you can send gifts to people through Amazon and it'll arrive the exact date that you want it to arrive. And it has a little box and you can leave a note and everything. And... Uh, yeah, Amazon gets it delivered for you. So, um, it's kind of funny because uh, when uh, when my brother sent this to me, I, I messaged him right away and I said, was this something we were talking about? Because it's been something I, I've been needing, actually. I uh, broke my only extractor quite a while back. And uh, he's like, no, I just... He said he was uh, just browsing around and uh, saw this uh, extractor kit and thought it would be cool to get for me. Um, yeah, it's awesome to get, uh, stuff related to your hobby f as a birthday gifts instead of, you know, random, random stuff. So this was really cool of my brother to, uh, to get for me. Some, uh, some pretty cool, uh, extractor profiles. And it comes in all sorts of thicknesses as you can see this one's uh, 0.4 millimeters um, I think this is the thinnest that it'll come in 0.2 and that's extremely thin I forget how many thousands that is but yeah I think that's the uh, yeah that's the thinnest 1.2 and you also have these uh, I think they call them spiral extractors but I don't I actually think these ones are a spiral, as they're not screwing in. It's just like, uh, um, I forget what you call those little files for, uh, for propane torches and stuff like that, propane tips. I think that's basically what it is. So yeah, I thought I'd share that. That was pretty cool of my brother to, uh, to get for me. Just, uh, had this case from actually my first pick set and they all fit fit in here pretty nicely so that'll uh, definitely come in handy I'll be really glad that I have this next time I get a broken key job here in the building which uh, I know it'll happen again because it's happened a few times already <laughs> old locks people rough with their stuff um, second, this I wanted to share, I actually, uh, mentioned, uh, or I kind of hinted at, at Paul about this, um, it's a new pick design I came out with, um, kind of gave it away right there, but, uh, I've been wanting to make, uh, everyday carry kind of pick that, uh, you know what I mean, was everything I needed in, in a really small package and something I could just stick in my pocket or have on my keychain that uh, I didn't have to think about grabbing, it would always be there. Um, this isn't quite done yet, but uh I'll give you the idea. I can't fit uh, a huge Allen wrench in there, but I'll explain what I came up with. But anyway, you can see here that... Uh, have this little brass piece and turn down on each end and thread it in the middle so I can screw it in and I have basically a normal pick that's what I'm basically uh, used to using I use a brass one all the time and a little bit smaller diameter but uh, yeah thought that was kind of neat and uh, no I don't have a lathe I did this all on the drill press not the easiest thing to do in the world, but, uh, yeah, there it is, nonetheless. 
quite happy how this turned out. I was thinking um, of making a, a clip like this that would be the Allen wrench. But I don't know how I would do that. I was thinking maybe drill a hole in the end and put a, a set screw and a hole through the side that would have a, a longer uh, tension wrench. Something like this. But um, I'm probably going to leave it like that. I always carry a, a multi-tool, or I try to always carry one, and it's easy enough just to put a few tension wrenches in here, and I'll always have them on me. Um, I have, let me see here, um, Can't quite find what I'm looking for. Sorry about that, guys. But yeah, I believe I have uh, a tiny piece of brass left. Oh, this isn't it, but I believe I have a tiny piece of brass left that uh, would be just enough to make another one of these and I have plenty of aluminum so uh, Paul buddy if you're interested um, wouldn't mind making one of these for you give it a test um, so this is the diameter I uh, I started with and I just chucked it into the the drill and filed it down and hit this with a, a die hit that with a tap and yeah came out pretty good I think the hardest part was drilling the whole whole thing here because they don't have super long drill bits and I had to keep clearing out the uh, the hole there but yeah that's that and uh, last but certainly certainly not least I finally uh, got my Taylor group 2 safe lock mounted up um, definitely not the prettiest thing in the world but I just wanted to get this thing mounted and uh, have a play with it and yeah, see, uh, confirm my suspicions about uh, how it's made and um, yeah, just quickly mount it up to some pine. Um, looks like crap right now, but it might, might be alright once I get it painted, but like I said, this is just temporary. I might, uh, I might make another one out of some uh, nicer stuff. But yeah, I just uh, used some dowel, spaced, spaced it so the both ends are two and a half inches uh, apart. And uh, I don't know how good this is showing up. There we go. Um, yeah, mounted the lock on the back. Um, one thing I have to say about these old locks is they're definitely built to tighter tolerances. Look at the... Uh, how close of a fit the the dial and the uh, the dial ring are. It's just compared to the S and G here. You can see uh, it's not quite the same. Um, and as far as the lock, my suspicions were right. Um, yeah, it's funny how this is just. Uh, floating in there until you put the cap on but uh, so I mean it's obviously not a direct entry because it has you know the cam wheel on the uh, the lever nose here but it just seems like I still have to space this a little bit but it it really seems like the lever um, doesn't ride on the cam wheel because it's just, you can't feel anything at all. But if I push down, and right now, actually right now, some of the gates are lined up. Um, I push down, and I can, he says, if I can get my finger in there without blocking the view. Oops. I'll do it that way. 
yeah, so I can feel that contact point, obviously, but can't really feel that one. But it is, uh, it is riding on the wheel. And I've read the same thing in the forums. Some people can, can feel the, uh, the left contact point, or some people can feel the right one, but yeah, it's uh, really built to good tolerances. I want to say that uh, that lever is only a couple thousandths. How could I say that? Um, yeah, the lever is only a couple thousandths. There's only a little bit of a gap between the uh, fence and the wheel when the lever nose is riding on the, uh, the cam wheel there. It's funny, I push down now and I can't feel anything at all. I guess it really depends where the wheels are. But, uh, yeah, I'm not sure how someone would decode this. I know it's the noisiest lock I've ever seen. I don't, I don't have a huge sample size. I'm not, uh, an expert on this by any means, but, uh, maybe, uh, maybe these old locks, maybe they did use, uh, um, sound as a way to, uh, to manipulate them. I have read that that is a thing. People do use stethoscopes, um, but, uh, yeah, there you can really, really depends where the wheels are, but, I'm really wondering if the lever nose didn't ride on the cam wheel, um, how someone would manipulate this open. Uh, like I said, I, I, I'm not too knowledgeable in this stuff, but uh, I think that would almost be like a direct entry, but you can't put tension on anything. Again, I have to do some more uh, reading about that uh, that stuff. But yeah, pretty cool nonetheless. Um, found the combination. Um, oh, I forget it now. But uh, we can just line up the gates here. Oh, I went too far. Um, almost somewhere like that. So there our gates are lined up. Might not be exactly in the right position, but uh, put the bolt and lever back on. Yeah, they were in the right place. So there we can see how the how the cam wheel grabs the uh, lever nose and pulls the. Uh, the bolt up uh, out of the way, kind of interesting. And let's see if I just rotate one wheel. Even then, we barely. It's like we're riding on that first wheel or last wheel. Okay, there we go. Uh, getting some contact but uh, just to compare it quickly to already 14 minutes but just to compare it quickly to the old SNG here or the new SNG I should say um, the contact points are unmistakable like you can the the thing will just stop on them like sorry about the glare but you, this is unmistakable feel through the dial. It'll just stop at the left and right contact points. Um, probably not going to go into detail about how these uh, locks are decoded. Um, I don't mind sharing little things like that where some of the people that are already uh, um, already know how they work um, can understand. But uh, it's quite frowned upon for people to... Uh, to show how these are manipulated on video and uh, 
being that I'm working towards becoming locksmith, I don't I don't want to get any anybody mad at me for sharing trade secrets like that. But uh, I say trade secrets, but if you go online, it's <laughs> it's pretty easy to find uh, find information about how how these are manipulated. Um, I, I'd love to go into detail about it, but I'm not an expert at all. I I only know very little bit. Never even uh, manip manipulated this open yet. Um, just trying to find some time to sit down and and graph it out. But uh, yeah, I hope you guys understand that uh, my reasoning for that. And uh, I don't know if you're that interested. Just uh, either go check it out or. Maybe I'll make a private video sometime about uh, about my uh, my progress in in learning uh, yeah learning uh, manipulation of safe uh, safe combo locks like that. All right, guys, didn't mean for this to to be so long winded. It's time to sign off with that. Um, kind of enjoy doing these just random uh, random videos about uh, whatever updates or little things that I'm up to. Let me know what you guys think, but as always, uh, don't give lock pickers a bad name. Don't pick locks that you don't own or have permission to pick. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care.